Up next on Full Sail Live, just one week after the NBA passed a proposal to resume play, concerns over what that actually looks like are popping up like weeds. In Major League Baseball, the game of tug of war continues between owners and players as impatience mounts. Plus, new developments in the lawsuit between Zion Williamson and his former marketing agency that could put Duke, Coach K, and Nike all on the forefront of potential violations. What's happening? Michael Vick with you today, and welcome to another edition of Full Sail Live. Listen, if you feel anything like me, it's a bit like Phil Connors in Groundhog Day. Just when we feel like we've made some progress one day, we wake up to the same questions the next. Enter the NBA, where last Friday, the Board of Governors met and approved a proposal to resume play July 30th. But concerns over safety with coronavirus remain, and we still don't have the answers. For instance, how often is testing? What if one person tests positive? What type of domino effect is that going to have with everyone being on the same court? Some coaches are over the age of 60. What does that mean? Well, at the very least, it means that without these answers, a growing number of players have their reservations. As far as um, actually playing and going back down into Orlando, we, I'm, I'm still up in the air a little bit because I yeah. really don't, you know, we, we don't have all the details. We don't know a lot of information. Uh, so until we have that, it's kind of hard to just, you know, co commit to it 100 percent. I mentioned the growing concern among players. Friday night, Kyrie Irving was reported to be a significant voice on a player only Zoom with about 100 other players. The discussion was over any and all concerns with virus protocols, as well as the possible distraction that coming back could have on the focus of creating real change with racial injustice. Switching gears to baseball, where it's mostly been in reverse lately, but might we finally be making progress? Yet again, the back and forth continued this week. Today, Major League Baseball countered again, proposing 72 games at 80% proration, but only if the postseason is completed. If not, that number drops to 70%. They also imposed a Sunday deadline for players to respond. The feeling is that this will once again be rejected. The MLBPA has remained tightly galvanized against taking what they call a second pay cut. They want fully prorated salaries as agreed back in March. If that's the measuring stick, then we're no closer to a deal. What we are approaching is the 11th hour. If the two sides can't come up with a deal together real soon, Major League Baseball does have the power to impose a schedule of its desired length, which would probably be 48 to 50 games. I just got a text from colleague Jesse Rogers, who heard from four players who said, let's just get it over with and play 50 games at this point. That's the feeling of the players right now, and it's frustration, and it's disillusionment, but they are also intractable right now, so it's going to be interesting to see when they counter, which they're going to do by Sunday, which is when MLB has asked for a response to this, what exactly they counter with. So as baseball tries to figure out the present, we still got a glimpse of the future. Thursday's 2020 MLB draft saw Arizona State slugger Spencer Torkelson taken number one by the Detroit Tigers. Torkelson smashed 26 homers as a freshman in 2018, annihilating Barry Bonds' freshman Pac-12 record of 11. The now junior becomes the first college first baseman ever selected number one overall. The Tigers announced him as a third baseman, suggesting a different plan. But his athletic ability and openness to playing third has the Tigers organization believing that the transition will be smooth despite having never played the position. Well, we won't soon forget the year of Zion in college basketball. For six months, he was the show. Must see TV, leaving no doubt by the end of his freshman campaign that he would be the top pick in the 2019 NBA draft. Just before the draft, he parted ways with his marketing agency, Prime Sports Marketing. He then hired his now current agency of CAA Sports. That's turned into a $100 million lawsuit. Gina Ford, who represented Zion, claims her client breached their contract. Williamson's attorneys claim the contract was void under clauses that protect the NCAA student athlete in the state of North Carolina. But Ford argues Zion should have never been eligible to begin with. New evidence filed claims Williamson received, quote, money, benefits, favors, and other things of value to attend Duke and wear Nike. The latest claim points to three luxury cars in his parents' name and a North Carolina home they relocated to from South Carolina 
valued at around $950,000 with a monthly rent of approximately $5,000. According to the filing, the home belongs to a Duke alumni. Of course, the subject of college athletes receiving improper benefits is nothing new, but Duke has always remained above the fray. Where this could get messy is Ford's legal team is seeking to open up to discovery into the alleged benefits, as well as testimony from head coach Mike Krzyzewski. If this does get that far, this could have far-reaching implications for Duke, Coach K, and Nike if this case isn't settled soon. Coming up after the break, the NFL is putting their money where their mouth is. What they're doing to combat racial injustice next on Full Sail Live. <laughs> 